My name is Ray Redness and I own Old Moon Guitars. I became a luthier pretty much um, at a necessity. It, it happened by accident, and I mean literally by accident. I, I had an accident and, and uh, damaged the nerves in my right arm and wasn't able to play acoustic guitar because I couldn't put my arm over the box. And um, my wife suggested that I get one of those skinny guitars. So I, I thought, oh, yeah, right, I could. I always wanted a Telecaster, let me go get a Telecaster. And as it turned out, the, the edge on the Telecaster was still too sharp. So uh, she said, well, you'll have to get one of the ones with the uh, shaped top. And I said, ah, I was never a Strat guy. That's, you know, not my style. So her suggestion was that you'll just have to build one. So I did. Immediately after that, my son started borrowing the guitar I built for myself. And it got to the point where I had to go borrow it back if I wanted it. And uh, his, his little deal was I had to build him one. So I did that. And from there, he said, hey, I got a friend who wants you to build him one. And one thing led to another, and he now has four or five of them, and, <laughs> and I'm still building. My son was in college and then he was working in uh, recording studios and people would hear him play or see his guitars or borrow his guitars and um, one thing would lead to another and, and I'd get a call from someone or, or my son Jesse would call me and say, hey, I've, I've got to meet, you, you've got to meet this guy, he wants you to build him a guitar. The, the difference is between custom-made guitars and production guitars, I think, get summed up fairly easily in that a production guitar is something that they've designed to build many of. And they build these guitars, and if they come out and sound wonderful, if the necks they happen to put on them go very well with the bodies they happen to put them on, uh, and the tone comes out right, with the electronics that they're gonna put in all of them the same way, well, it's luck. A custom-made guitar, you literally go around and tap the wood till you find what you're looking for. And those are the pieces you put together and each has a different feel and a different tonal quality. When I sit down to build a guitar, a specific guitar for someone, it's, it's a very, in my mind, an iterative process. It goes back and forth between the player and me. I spend time watching them play, listening to them play, and talking to them. I just recently finished the bass for Alan Gorey of the Average White Band, and that guitar now has been pretty much all over the world. Other people, Matt Baxter, who's a studio player, and uh, his was, and again, it's an, it's an iterative back and forth idea. He thought he knew exactly what he wanted and what he wanted it to look like. Well, he, he played that particular guitar for about a year and a half and called me up and said, you know what? This just doesn't have enough air in the sound. And um, we, we talked about that for a while and I wound up building him a, a same style, but a hollowed Stratocaster style. Uh, with a koa top, koa wood top, very resonant, very airy sounding, and we kept all the electronics the same, and he's still playing it, and this is five or six years ago now. I recently built a guitar for, for a young player, but this player was so energetic and so outstanding that he knew precisely what he would want in a dream guitar. And one of the things that he challenged me with was that he wanted to be able to vary the phase. And I spent a lot of time trying to think about how to do that. And I had the idea that a wah-wah pedal is a variable phase. That's, that's what it does. It brings you in and out of phase, and that's how you get the sound in a wah-wah pedal. So I bought one, took it apart, and took the printed circuit board out of it, learned how the whole circuit worked, 
and what I had to do to integrate it and I built that into the back of this guitar and I had to figure out how to wire that in with the two other things that he wanted in this guitar that are not usual. One is our piezo pickups in, in the saddles so that he can have an acoustic sound and the other was a, a boost, a distortion boost built in. So it was, it was a challenge, it was fun. If you're looking to achieve a certain feel, sound, uh, and, a, and a whole sense of oneness with the player, you have to know the player and you have to know exactly what you're trying to achieve. You can't do that with a production guitar.